Well, I think it just underscores for people that this isn't just a fight in Iraq and in Syria, and that it's not just a fight about dropping bombs on terrorists. It's really how we stop the causes that lead to extremism in a place like Libya. The fact that there's no governance and there's no opportunity for young people, it lets groups like ISIL grow there and flourish there, which is what you saw with this awful situation with these Egyptians that you just mentioned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't seen or heard of her since, uh, since that uh, horrific... Uh interview. And by the way, there was a report I read, and I should follow up on this, and, but uh, that she, remember I said it sounded like a, a liberal doing a term paper, uh, a, a, an ultra-liberal doing a term paper on her utopian view of terrorism, how to fight it? She actually wrote a, a, a thesis in college, supposedly, reportedly, I saw one report, on the Middle East and Israel. Love to see that. Joining us now, Pamela Geller. And of course, uh, she is president of the American Freedom Defense Initiative, and you can read her at PamelaGeller.com. Hello. Hey, Steve. How are you? I'm good. Good to talk to you. All right. So guess what? The whole narrative painted by then put forth by this administration and Maria Harf and the rest of them uh, that, oh, find them a job, get them a business. They're impoverished. They're underprivileged. They have they, nowhere else to turn. Well, Jihadi John or whatever they want to call him came from a well-to-do family living in London, had a college education and degree. And uh, he is who he is. Yes, he was, uh, it was revealed that he was once a fun-loving kid who loved The Simpsons, played PlayStation games, loved eating chips, and he dreamt of becoming a Premier League uh, soccer player. So what happened? Yeah, what, what happened? What happened right? to Jihadi John? What happened to, Ab what happened to Abdul Barry, the British musician? Uh, what happened to the Christmas underwear bomber? He was the son of a diplomat. Well, to do banker. This is a consistent pattern. Uh, by and large, the Muslims from the UK, from Europe, from the United States are all well educated, all from um, uh, either affluent or well to do families. What is the common thread? The common thread is religiosity, is devoutness, is, is piety. And, you know, the Obama administration, Obama and his his lemmings, as it were, they drop below the level of the savage who believes that their magic words have the power to alter reality. That's what you see here. Everything that they're, they're, they're prefacing their policy on, their talking points on, their strategy or lack thereof, their incoherent strategy, is based on a false premise. You're and they cannot and will not withdraw from it. No, absolutely not. And, you know, you, you have uh, at uh, PamelaGeller.com a, a poll uh, that shows uh, very uh, scary, frightening statistics, again flying in the face of the narrative presented by the administration and their supporters when it comes to how many uh, radical Islamists there are and how many uh, Muslims support it. What's interesting to me is the headline from that particular poll, which I thought was quite stunning, uh, that 25% of Muslims in the UK support the Charlie Hebdo and Kosha Delhi massacre, uh, jihad massacres. Uh, the headline was, the majority of Muslims don't. This is interesting to me. This is exemplar of the subtle Islamophobia exhibited by the mainstream media. It's the low, you know, expectation uh, of soft bigotry, as it were. Because what they're saying is, oh, look, there are Muslims that don't support it. I'm more troubled by the 25% of Muslims that do support it. Uh, and I think, of course, if you look at the support for Sharia in Muslim countries across the world, that number is strikingly higher. But even if it is just 25% of the worldwide Muslim population, that's 450 million Muslims. Absolutely. That, that's, that, that's a scary number. That is a movement that is not, quote unquote, fringe, that is not, quote unquote, a tiny minority or a radical few. That is a large movement, and that is a movement that is uh, daily, um, not just thinking, but acting. Look, people say, oh, you know, they, they, all not, they, they all don't want to strap one on. I agree, they all don't want to strap one on. I also don't wear a uniform, and I also don't carry a gun. But i got to tell you something, Steve. I support the U.S. military. Yeah. It's the same thing. 
Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and, uh, and, and these Christians telling us that these people aren't Muslims, uh, who are Christians uh, like President Obama to tell a Muslim that they're not practicing what they believe to be Islam, as unfortunate as it might be? Pamela Geller, always good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, folks, up next, businessman, lawyer, and author of The Control Factor, Our Struggle to See the True Threat, Bill Siegel will be here. Don't miss it.